Okay. Uh, Felix, thank you for taking the time to be with me here today. Great. Pleasure. And it's, uh, it's really cool. I'm, uh, I'm speaking to you in, in New Jersey. It's uh, nine o'clock in the morning. I'm just starting my day. And for you, it's nine o'clock at night. This is your last call and you're getting ready to go to bed, right? <laughs> yes, yeah, awesome. <laughs> um, well, I'd like to kind of just like uh, give, the, uh, give listeners a little bit of background on, on your experience. Um, you've worked in growth at, at several companies. Uh, you were the community manager at Techstars. Um, you did Startup Weekend. Um, you even did Y Combinator Startup School. Uh, you've done some mentorship stuff, which I want to talk to you about as well, like with the Young Founders School, kind of mentoring um, like younger uh, startup founders. Um, and now you're currently head of growth at Angel Hub. Um, yes. Sure. Have kind of this like diverse range of, of uh, experience in, in both growth and startups. Um, tell me a little bit about specifically what is Angel Hub? Sure. So um, Angel Hub is an equity-based crowdfunding platform here in Hong Kong. And uh, people usually compare us with Reploply, CrowdKit, SigInvest, Seeders, etc. So we look at um, early stage in, uh, companies from seed to series A stage. And we invest companies and we make the decisions um, by onboarding uh, accredited investors and high net worth individuals. So uh, our platform exists bef because we want to speed up the venture investment process for uh, young entrepreneurs, like as in first time or second time founders who are, might be in the midst of dealing with venture capitalists and who, people who want to seek for alternative investment. So my responsibility with, with the company is to oversee the whole uh, digital footprint. And secondly, I also, um, uh, looking for uh, potential startups, um, organizations such as accelerators, incubator to work with, and also manage our investors' relations in the regions. Currently, we're investing globally, except the U.S., because of the regulations of our financial license in Hong Kong. So we only okay. invest uh, companies in Southeast Asia, Europe, and Oceania. And... Um... Obviously, like what we're we're talking in in May 2020, um, there's a there's a lot going on in the world specifically. Um, I mean, it, globally, um, what kind of trends are you seeing in in the conversations you're having, both with with startups? So, like, maybe talk a little bit about how startups are thinking about this, but also maybe the investor relations. How are these high net worth individuals thinking about uh, investment during this time? Yeah, we can start with startups. So I think um, obviously the, you read a lot of news, you heard a lot of startups, uh, layoffs and, and might be closing down, but um, some startups still managed to survive because they were well trained under the remote working uh, momentum. And uh, also companies who uh, borrowed the ideas from e-commerce, um, you know, uh, Technologies such as robotics, drones, obviously on the rise because of the pandemic. And also companies from healthcare, uh, biotech sectors are definitely um, uh, something really interesting, particularly in this, this period. So we do have an increasing amount uh, of startups applying on Ninja who want to close uh, their round. Uh, but at the same time, we do see another uh, challenge from the investor side because not um, all investors are educated in terms of how to invest and look at deals uh, such as healthcare companies or data because they're super technical and a lot of mm. trials and, and uh, proven license and research needed. So that's why we kind of needed um, to provide this knowledge to our investors and uh, react in terms of um, the, the investment strategy. So yeah, opportunity challenges at the same time, but I think um, we are in the right position to, to look at uh, investment from different angle and provide our um, advice and help startups uh, work through the challenges. So um, basically from what you're saying, there's kind of like a disconnect between the uh, investor knowledge of uh, potential startups right now that could be valuable and that have the most opportunity. 
So specifically like within the, the healthcare sector, am I understanding that correctly? Yes, correct, correct. Um, we are an industry agnostic investment platform, so we don't have any particular preference, uh, but however, because of the situation right now, more and more companies from the healthcare sector, remote working solutions, e-commerce, on-demand, robotics are coming in. Mm -hmm. um, so that's why we need to prepare ourselves to provide certain kind of knowledge to our investors and also the community. Um, how should we deal with founders from these sectors? Uh, what uh, advice can we give? How can we help startups grow from uh, point A to point B sectors? Right. And it's, it's kind of funny, like um, I've, I've had the opportunity to talk to a lot of people that have the role of growth, right? And that can mean so much. Myself, I come from a background specifically in like performance marketing. And so when I think about growth, kind of my first um, inkling is to think about acquisition, is to think about funnels and, and that type of thing. Um, but with what you're doing, it's, it's so different. Like how... How do you think about that? Like when you think about a head of growth role, um, what are kind of the, the skills that you think are, are like extremely relevant today? Yeah, I, I came from data science background. So I'm always data driven and, and uh, number centric. And um, I started my growth and uh, marketing journey uh, uh, back in my, my first, when I started my first company. Five years, ago, five years ago in social media analytics as well as influence and marketing. And that's how I get into the mindset of funnel, rapid experiments, all different kind of uh, marketing channels. And I basically just combine my skill sets from marketing, data science, and user experience in one place and create something better. And for me right now, I am applying uh, my skills in growth marketing in terms of acquiring investors. Okay. from different channels and nurture relationships and eventually convert our investors into um, investment towards our investment portfolio. So I facilitate conversation, I facilitate trainings, onboardings, and make our platforms uh, as seamless as possible. So I think um, one major um, mindset for me is uh, rapid experience and celebrate failure um, because when we say growth, we are not just talking about growth. We also measure what makes the companies go down, what makes metrics go down. So I think it's really important for uh, growth marketers and also other executives to understand what makes um, uh, your company goes up or down. Right. Um, and maybe talk a little bit about that customer acquisition or customer journey as it relates to investors coming onto the platform and investing. Um, and what are some particular strategies that, that you're leveraging um, in order to kind of like get them through? Yeah, interesting question. So um, my team and I basically ask ourselves a question every day. Yep. <laughs> where, do you, where do you investor go? And what makes investors, uh, how can we attract investor eyeballs? And by using these two hypotheses, hypothetical questions, we basically list out all the channels that might, we might want to invest our resources and pay attention to. So uh, you can say platforms, platforms like AngelList, Crunchbase, accelerators. Uh, we used to have a lot of demo days across the world and everything converted into a virtual uh, setting right now. Right. And I, I, I mean, for us, it's definitely a great opportunity because we can reach investors overseas easier than before. And you mean uh, virtual that, demo days? Yeah, virtual demo days. A lot of virtual demo days right now. Even from Techstars, Y Combinator, they do virtual demo days wow. because of the pandemic. And investors still turn up. I managed to participate in some uh, business uh, investment matchmaking uh, organized by our uh, community as well. And I think the experience was, was pretty good and super effective. Like 15-minute slot, mix. I mean, in the past, you have a lot of excuse to push your meetings, and now everything is online, and uh, you just book your slot, and start a conversation. So yeah, we, we make use of a lot of channels. We, we ask ourselves where the investors go, how can we attract them, and we just um, find a way to um, uh, you know, prospect a list of people we want to reach based on public information, and we just talk to these people on platforms. 
Um, with everything so unknown in terms of how this pandemic is, how long is this is going to last, how consumer behavior is going to change, um, kind of like the, the lagging effect, um, how has that shifted the uh, conversations that you're having with investors, the, the questions that they're asking and how you're kind of forecasting? From my perspective, um, I think that there's going to be a lag of this. Like, I, there's a certain level of anxiety that a lot of people are having now. Um, and so, uh, you know, if we, if we had a conversation six months ago, um, stock markets were going great, everything was going great, real estate was doing great, um, now it's quite different. So I'm wondering how that has shifted for you. For me personally, I, it's really hard to uh, forecast and estimate how long does it take to, you know, um, until the coronavirus, uh, you know, slow down. And I mean, when we say slow down, it's not just one country. We basically need a majority of countries slow down, and then we can say it's safe right now. It's good to travel. It's good to resume physical connections. So it's really hard to uh, tell because there's so much uncertainty still. And for us, it's definitely changed a lot of mindset, um, how we operate our business, how we deal with people. And um, given that under a startup setting, we are small enough, we are agile enough to change things. Unlike corporations, there's so many policy and hierarchy. For us, we just move everything online and click. That's it. And um, I think for us personally, we don't see major red flags so far. Um, but how, but my, um, I think my personal opinion is if our customers, if our stakeholders, if they, they are under a challenge, we might, uh, you know, under the same challenge as well. So customers succeed, we succeed. However, the ecosystem is under a very difficult uh, time right now. So uh, we just uh, try to reprioritize how we do things and uh, do short-term goals in terms of, instead of long-term goals. So there's been kind of a, a mindset sh shift from thinking long-term to really like short-term problem solving, which, which kind of lends itself to um, this philosophy of constant experimentation and A-B testing. I think it's funny, like, uh, people that I chat with that have more experience at startups um, compared to like larger organizations now specifically are kind of more at home. Like it's, it's like I'm used to thinking short term and thinking about rapid experimentation, um, but there's still challenges. Uh, I'd love to ask like about the, the, um, the virtual uh, demo days. That sounds so cool. Like, how how is that organized and how, how's that going? We actually did our own virtual demo day as well. Okay. And, we, and at the same time, we attended a lot by other prominent accelerators. And I can tell our experience was pretty, um, it's a kind of a surprise because right before the coronavirus, we did a global roadshow. To, we visited 12 cities across the world and we did pitch day when we land the city and we put up 10 good startups on the stage um, and up, um, com we, when we completed 12 cities, we we're back to Hong Kong. We have over 500 startups ready to raise funds and uh, top 10 from each uh, top, you know, the, the champions per cities are coming in to uh, participate in the grand finale. And then the coronavirus suddenly come in and uh, we need to convert the whole um, demo day into a virtual setting. And we just <laughs> finished the thing uh, last month, actually. So yeah, uh, it's kind of an um, uh, emotional um, uh, thing. And we test a lot of tools. We need to deal with people from different time zones. We need to manage the presentation quality from technical presentation mentality and what um, slides they're going to use and all that is really challenging in terms of a loss of coordination out there. And at the same time, we need to attract participants all over the world. We need to manage the expectations and make yeah. sure everything okay. So it's interesting. I, I do see um, a loss of organizations to manage to replicate the um, experience, uh, ex uh, the um, demo day experienced all the way up to a virtual setting. They still manage to put startups up on stage, 
uh, still manage to uh, facilitate the conversation between founders and investors who want to continue conversations and they just use different tools to facilitate the process. So I think it's getting there. I think um, virtual events been been around for, for some time and you can sure. see a lot of new tools coming up, now a lot of alternatives apart from Zoom. So it's definitely interesting space. Yeah, what um what tools <laughs> were being leveraged during these during these demo days in order to the conferencing, in order to engage the conversation? Yeah, I mean Zoom is nice to have one on one conversation and also small group workshops, webinar style event. For virtual events, conferences, I do uh, attend a lot. And I think Hey Submit is definitely one of the most famous tools right now. Lots of uh, organizations like uh, Product Lead Institute, Growth Marketer, uh, you know, uh, platforms also using them. And um, another interesting tool called VFair. Mm -hmm. They basically convert the whole thing into uh, sort of a seams a like conference, you can see after walking, you can still, um, you know, pick the sections you want to participate, you have exhibitors, and it's quite interesting. You just made me think of something. I mean, obviously, as we, we're kind of being forced into working remotely now, right? Um, and virtual reality specifically has been something that hasn't really been adopted by a wide variety of consumers yet. I can imagine like uh, a future in which we're like putting on our virtual reality headsets to attend like some sort of conference or demo yeah. day and like walking around and meeting someone and like you're dressed as like an alligator, but you know, like you're a venture investor. I think it's kind of cool. Yeah, I think apparently <laughs> the, the technology has been exists for, for a decade. And yeah. if we look at esports and gaming, it's actually the same technology and we just apply the same thing towards the business environment. And suddenly people got excited about the whole thing. Uh, but all the e-gamers has, has been using the same technology, communicating with people for a long time already. Yeah. Yeah, yeah it's amazing. I mean, even like um, Call of Duty is something that's getting really popular now, like a lot yeah. of a lot of kids playing. And um, it's crazy, like you go into that world and you're you're with three to four other people talking and communicating and like solving this problem in this other world. And yeah, it's, uh, it's interesting. It's interesting to shift. Um, I'd love to, I'd love to learn a little bit. Like when I look at your LinkedIn, um, I see a lot of stuff, right. And I think it's very cool. Um, specifically like with your volunteer experience, um, because you're very passionate about startups clear, clearly. Um, what kind of value do you get out of that? Like you mentor so many different companies. Um, I'd like to think about like everyone kind of, most people have like a nine to five um, or maybe they have one thing they're working on. How do you think about all of these other things you're doing? And like, how does that, that experience like support, you know, your one main role? I really appreciate your questions and I can definitely talk about this for a week. <laughs> yeah. And, um, a uh, long story short, I think how I get started into uh, mentorships or mentoring is all because um, how I get inspired by people around me when I first started my first company a long time ago. And back then, the startup ecosystem in my region is still kind of young. So there's not much, you know, senior entrepreneurs and, and mentors out there. We need to, you know, help ourselves. We up in online courses, we, we talk to our peers, and eventually the uh, startup ecosystem took off. And I spent one year in my first startup, I, and I decided to move on because I realized the beauty of helping people and also become the facilitator of a community. And um, that's why I go back to uh, Startup Weekend. That's where I get started the entre my entrepreneurial journey and just volunteer my time, organize events. And eventually I, I get connected with a lot of people who share the same mindset. And suddenly I, I keep, you know, um, doing all the same thing nonstop using my free time uh, out of the nine to five. I do see a lot of values, good and bad. And I believe mentorships is a two way learning as a mentor you uh, learn how to um, give directions. At the same time, you learn how to become a better listener. 
from the mentee perspective, you learn how to, at the same time, learn how to become a better listener as well and how to ask prop proper questions. And mm -hmm. I think having this uh, two-sided uh, learning experience always helping myself as well as the mentee to grow together. So that's why I really um, into giving my, my free time to uh, work with um, the next generations of entrepreneurs, organizations, and, and whoever would need me. And um, eventually I spent five years with, with Startup Weekends and tech, eventually joined Techstars as an employee as, as well. I organized over 80 Startup Weekends worldwide and uh, met a lot of great people from, from participants, mentors, uh, judges, sponsors. I mean, it's kind of a really nice and positive network effect. And I just translate the same mindset towards other organizations as well. So I can help um, people from different uh, personas, like students or, or even um, entrepreneurs who are about to retire. So kind of very different demographics. And I just keep learning and, and meeting great people. Yeah, it's very cool. Um, I, I started my career in, in kind of like software sales. And so um, that kind of world is very motivated just by like monetary gain. And a lot of the conversations I had with fellow salespeople was like, are you going to hit quota? How much money are you going to make that mm. type of thing? And I was selling an ad tech uh, platform, ad role, like a really big programmatic retargeting platform. Um, and I was always more interested in like the marketing aspect, but just like how things grow rather than like helping, you know, Amazon get a little bit bigger. I was always interested in like the kind of like the, the startup ecosystem. Um, and so I eventually transitioned my career working in like enterprise sales into paid acquisition and now kind of more growth marketing. And now I'm doing more like product development stuff and interested in startups more, which is, it's like a really cool transition. Um, it's also a hard one because a lot of times, like I talk to so many people that, you know, might've been doing something for a monetary gain and then like, made that hard transition to do something else and they, they never uh a lot of they never like regret that right like they always they always are kind of happy about figuring it out um cool i know we have a, a couple minutes left uh, the 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 last the last things i i like to to chat about specifically about like your routines and and how you think about learning and and habit development it's something that i'm extremely passionate about um, I've, I'm really into personal development. I, I'm into meditation. I do like the Wim Hof breathing and cold showers and stuff. Um, but I'm really interested about like how humans schedule their routines and then like how your schedule impacts your overall growth. So I'm sure that you have some thoughts here. Would love to hear about how you think about that. Nice. I think, uh, the same story started when I became an entrepreneur. I realized the beauty of self-taught, self-learning and discipline. So that's why I, I started a couple of um, regular routines from daily routines all the way to weekly and monthly as well in order to quantify myself. And just to give you a few examples, uh, when I say daily routines, I have a checklist on my to do list, like repeat every day. And I... I I, I hate to say force myself, but kind of, because it's, uh, <laughs> it's in between the motivations and also pressure. Every day I manage to connect uh, three people, like strangers completely, could be in my industries or um, people outside of the world on, on LinkedIn, social media or other spectrums. And I just talk to people every day, three people every day, new people. And we continue conversations. Eventually we can create something really interesting. And um, apart from that, I also uh, read um, one or two articles about growth or startup investment every day. So related to my uh, professional career, I also um, have a habit of um, commenting and contribute content on platforms like Indie Hackers, Product Hunt. So I need to contribute 10 comments every day on Indie Hackers. That's on okay. my daily routine. And I think it's kind of train up my, my uh, because uh, English is not my native language. I'm just training my, how I write, how I speak, how I interpret and how I read. I think it's a good practice for myself personally. And apart from all these little routines, I also um, manage to structure my work routine into a different theme per day. So for example, on Monday, I only do uh, email marketing. If my teammates ask me questions about email marketing on Thursday, I will answer on Monday. 
um, <laughs> because I can really focus on one single tool on Monday without switching browsers, without locking up out, and I just focus on everything about email marketing on Monday, onboarding, optimized content, drip campaigns, uh, tracking, etc. On Tuesday, I do social media. On Wednesday, I do a uh, search. On Thursday, I do a uh, drip, um, whatever. And uh, usually on Friday, I will review the whole week and uh, measure success and see if there's anything we can improve the next week. So I think using this um, framing per day to help myself stay focused and really concentrate on certain things. And I do see um, uh, intangible uh, impacts towards my my uh, work productivity. I like that. Uh, some of these things are very small, right? Um, it, it might be connecting like one or two people or three people or just reading a few articles and just like the compounding effect of doing something small every day. Maybe you read five articles tomorrow, but you got your three done. Like, and you, you started yes. at a small enough barrier that you could then win that. Um, also the, the themes, something being in working in growth marketing and paid acquisition, part of our job is living in the data, analyzing performance, looking at click-through yeah. rates, CPC, whatever. Part of it is coming up with creatives and storyboarding ads and writing copy and thinking about brand messaging. I've had times where I'm trying to do those at the same time and like, I'll be writing copy and then it's like very boring. And it's like, yes, yeah, because exactly. I was just analyzing the campaign yeah. and I'm thinking about numbers and metrics and data, but now I have to think very creatively and more like a storyteller. So um, I like the, the way that you, the, you break that down. It, de it definitely works. Um, what about, uh, so the daily ones, I, I like that. Um, what about like monthly and, and quarterly? Uh, I guess we could end there. I'd love to hear about that. Yeah, um, I read uh, one book per month. So I break down my, my book usually into super small, maybe 10 pages per day. Okay. And then I move on to do my other stuff. And uh, usually every, every month or, or quarter, I will subscribe to an online course. Right now, I, I'm doing the venture deals by my for, former boss, uh, Brett Fell from Techstars. Yeah. Online. I, when, I work, when I was working for Texas, I didn't manage to complete the course, but then now I want to because I'm, I, I'm stepping my, my feet into an investment game right now. So I got to yep. revisit the, the whole concept. And you can see I have a couple of, um, uh, at least a couple of uh, examples on my LinkedIn as well. So it's kind of my, my uh, monthly routine. One course, one certification, and just help myself uh, keep my motivations going up. That's really cool. What are uh, the, the venture deals? Is that a free course? Yes, it's a free course. And uh, actually, uh, Brad Felt and Kaufman Foundation converted the book, Venture Deals. You can buy ah. the book on Amazon. It's 300 pages about venture investing, angels, alternative investment, and everything you need to know about uh, venture investment. And they converted the whole thing into an online course, super interactive. And every co cohort, they managed to put up more than 3,000 participants worldwide. You need to team up, you need to find your teammates and form a group of maximum uh, six people. And you just create um, a fake start company, imaginary startup, and imagine how you fundraise for the company. All the ways to um, find the right VC firms, negotiate, generate your term sheets, and eventually sell your company in just uh, eight weeks. That's very cool. Um, yeah. Cool. Well, I know that we're out of time. I know that you probably have to get ready for bed. Um, I, I appreciate the, the conversation. Um, I, I learned a lot. I, I, I love having these and I'm glad that I was one of your three uh, people, I guess, that you, you chatted with today. Um, yeah. any, any parting words? Um, make sure we stay in touch and do let me know how I can help you. Cool. Uh, thank you so much, Felix, and uh, yeah, have a great night, I'll say. Yes. Great. Okay, bye-bye.